I'm Jana Rocker. I'm a postdoctoral researcher here at Mitchell Cancer Institute. In February of 1982, I was 10 years old and I was playing on an exercise machine and I remember pulling and I just felt a little bit of pain but didn't really think anything of it. And it started to swell a little bit, started to hurt. I went to my mother and complained about it, so she took me to the doctor. He just kind of looked at it and said, oh, it's a pulled muscle, don't worry about it. Later, it was about as hard as a rock and the size of a grapefruit on my left arm. And my mother said, this is it, we've got to do something. And we ended up going to a sports medicine specialist in Dallas. He took an x-ray, that's the first thing he did. When we got the x-ray back, you could see it was just a giant mass. And he said uh, he suspected that it was osteosarcoma, which is a very, very aggressive bone cancer. And they did a biopsy. And sure enough, it came back positive. The doctor, he said, well, I know this doctor in Galveston. I'm Dr. George Searney. And he is pioneering a limb salvage procedure. And uh, he said he'll try to save it if he could, but be prepared for the worst. At the time of surgery, he, they couldn't save anything. It was actually already wrapped around the nerves and the blood vessels. And so they had to amputate. I, um, I do remember when they first started the chemo, I was excited. I mean, I was 10 years old. I thought it was great. I thought I'd be out, out of school. I could sit there and play. We had an Atari. They had a VCR. That was brand new technology back in 1982. They put the IV in and they started up the methotrexate, the first drug. And, you know, I'm all ready to dig into my, my, my fish dinner. I was all happy. And, and it wasn't five minutes after the drip started. I tasted this metallic taste in my mouth. And then I started throwing up. And I threw up for an entire year after that. I did not stop. I was about 100 pounds at the beginning. But by the time the treatment was over, I weighed about 45 pounds. I looked like a concentration camp victim. Yeah, Dr. Searney did definitely inspire me to my career in research. And I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. I was dissuaded a little bit from my path by an incident that occurred in college. It was the second year, it was the year when we had to pick a professor to work in their lab, and I had chosen one of the professors in biochemistry that I had a lot of respect for. And I remember him saying, well, you really can't work in a lab with one arm. It's just not, you just won't be able to do it. And I was just stunned. It was just like a brick had hit me in the side of the head. But, but I believed him. I was 23 years old. I didn't know any better. You know, I just thought he knew everything and he was the be all end all of all advice. And I just thought, well, okay, I'm going to just drop out. So I did end up taking a lot of computer science classes and getting a job. It wasn't until 2005 that I realized that I could get back into science. I just realized this wasn't what I wanted to do. I was moving away from science and not closer to it. It was 2008 and I had a doctor appointment here at Mitchell Cancer Institute. And I remember walking up the walk. You walk up the sidewalk and there's all the glass and you can see into the labs and you can see what everybody's doing. And I saw all the equipment. I realized that I knew what all of that equipment did and I knew how to operate every single thing in that lab and I thought you know I could I could work here this is what I want to do this is what I need this is where I need to be this is cancer research and this is what I need to be doing and in the class of 2009 is when I started my PhD here at um, University of South Alabama and I did my research here at Mitchell Cancer Institute well, working at Mitchell Cancer Institute and seeing the patients here it's very, it's been very inspiring for me because I realize what they're going through and I really want to make it better so that no one else has to go through the same types of problems even or even have to go through the cancer diagnosis. To see them makes me remember why I'm here and what I'm doing. In December I defended my dissertation and I dedicated my dissertation to Dr. Searney because he is such a huge inspiration in starting my scientific career. I tried to locate him again and I found his obituary online and we realized that he had died of pancreatic cancer. That just kind of hit me because what my research is turning into 
is actually a early detection for pancreatic cancer. So I feel like I've come almost full circle now. We hope to find a method of early detection that can save people's lives.